When patients come to your office or to the emergency department and are found to be in atrial fibrillation, or AFib, the symptoms they'll most commonly describe will be palpitations. Patients may feel a rapid heart rate or even occasionally chest discomfort or shortness of breath. Very often they are asymptomatic, and most patients don't realize that AFib has increased their risk of having a stroke. Stroke risk prevention is the key issue in AFib and needs to be emphasized as such. It is important for patients to understand that 30 to 50% of AFib strokes are fatal within one year, and 60% of them are disabling. This is roughly double the numbers that we see with non-AFib stroke. Stroke risk in patients with AFib far exceed the risks associated with hyperlipidemia and hypertension that we are so good at communicating to our patients. Also, almost a third of patients with AFib do not know the common symptoms of a stroke, so they may not even recognize if they were having a stroke. On the positive side, the evidence does actually show that a conversation about the importance of stroke prevention will improve this care gap for our patients. There are a number of key points that should be addressed in our conversations with AFib patients. What is AFib? AFib is a common cardiac arrhythmia that affects over 350,000 Canadians. It is often seen in people with heart disease, lung disease, or high blood pressure. AFib increases the stroke risk fivefold and is responsible for 20% of all strokes. What strategies do we use to treat AFib? Rate control, where you simply slow the rate with medications down into the normal range. Rhythm control, where medications and possibly even catheter ablation is used to try to keep them in sinus rhythm. Studies have failed to prove that one strategy is clearly superior to the other, so the decision is largely based on whatever keeps their symptoms under the best control. Regardless of which strategy is chosen, anticoagulation remains essential for stroke prevention. What is an AFib stroke? Most commonly, a blockage in an artery preventing blood flow to the brain. In the case of AFib, this blockage comes from a clot that has traveled from the heart. What should a patient watch for to know if they might be having a stroke? Most common stroke symptoms include weakness or numbness on one side, difficulty speaking, and or visual disturbances. What should a patient do in the situation of a stroke? Call 911 and get to the closest hospital right away for treatment of the clot. What might life be like for a patient who has had a stroke? It may have little long-term effect, but many patients die or are left disabled, which is why prevention is the key. What is a patient's risk for stroke? CHADS-2 or CHADS-VASC scoring can calculate stroke risk, and new Canadian guidelines for stroke prevention in atrial fibrillation make this easy, i.e. treat if over age 65 or any other risk factor for stroke. And how can a patient reduce that risk? Anticoagulant medication to reduce stroke risk by at least 66%. What about just ASA? ASA doesn't reduce the risk of stroke as much as anticoagulants, only 33%. Patients will have questions about bleeding risk as well, and we can use tools like the HasBled score to show our patients factors they can alter to reduce their bleeding risk. But it's important for them to understand that the evidence supports that reducing the risk of stroke is more important than avoiding the anticoagulant to reduce the risk of a bleed. We can usually manage any bleeding that might occur on anticoagulants, but once a stroke occurs in an AFib patient, they have only about one in three chance of a good recovery. The evidence supports the use of anticoagulants in stroke prevention, and Canadian AFib guidelines endorse that approach. Often, physicians will overestimate the risk of a bleed, but underestimate the risk of a stroke, so anticoagulants are often underprescribed for AFib patients. Interestingly, from a patient perspective, a paper published in 2014 showed that patients fear the risk of a stroke more than the risk of a bleed. Although they would rather have a minor stroke than a major bleed, patients reported that they considered a moderate stroke to be as bad as dying, and that a major stroke was even worse than death. And since most strokes in AFib are moderate or severe, patients favored the anticoagulants once they had the discussion. So it's time for us to make sure our patients know that stroke prevention in AFib is just as important as getting their symptoms under control. Their very lives just may depend on it.